thank you to Snakestone97 for their generous donation as a YouTube member. I lazily follow him back up to his apartment and sprawl out on the couch, desperate to decompress from that roller coaster of a tour. Mark hangs up our coats and heads to the bathroom, leaving me to relax alone. He hasn't spoken a word since we got back. Is he angry at me? With, uh, with me, at himself? He had the shower turn on. I guess I have some time to myself. The clock's ticking away, and I feel like a kid waiting for his mom to pick him up from a play date. Only I have nowhere else to go. I wish Simone was here. She always knew how to keep things lively, even during awkward moments. She refused to have a bad time and could defuse any argument. Even the explosive ones me and Ed used to have. She had no stake in our relationship at all, but still took it upon herself to salvage our friendship. Even after what I put her through. I wonder if she knew I kept seeing Ed after our breakup. I'd get butterflies in my stomach every time we met up with her after sneaking a quick fuck behind the work shed. Partly because I knew what we were doing was bad in the long run. Partly because I knew she thought our friendship was strong enough to keep us together even after our affair. And I think Christine would have ended up stuck with all this emotional baggage should I have gone along with that farce of a marriage my father put together. Uh, I don't want to think about that. What to do? I could always rub one out. Mark's still in the shower. I don't know how much time I have. What? What? Really? Just... <laughs> Okay, just out of nowhere, gonna, okay. <laughs> why, though? Well, seriously, why? Rub my hand over my junk and sink back into the couch, rubbing, relaxing my muscles, taking a deep breath. Feels so taboo to do this in someone's living room. Should I stop? What the fuck? <laughs> now I get a choice? <laughs> this is what I get the choice of? I mean, in, in what way am I supposed to be able to gauge what is the right thing to do? I would say stop. Like, bro. Fucking hell. But, you know, follow the plot, as it were. Well, that's why I saved. We're going to try one and see what happens. Fuck it. I haven't gotten off in a few days now. Just have to be sure not to make a big mess. I gently massage my cock over my pants and start to get hard. The rough fabric rubs against the head and I moan a little, biting down on my other hand to stifle my voice. I'd been depressed for so long I couldn't even get hard when I wanted to. I can finally feel myself coming back to life, my senses returning. Everything feels so intense and new. I rub over it again and feel a warm trickle of prey <laughs> leak out. I don't want to stain my pants in an obvious spot. I guess I should lose them. Just as I start to unbutton my fly, I hear the bathroom door swing open and the plopping of wet paws against the linoleum. Shit, shit, shit! Grab a pillow and quickly cover my crotch just as Mark enters the room wearing that cute little robe again. <laughs> Fucking hell. Whew. Sorry about that. I just... Hey, you alright? Never better. Why? Oh, no reason. You looked a little flushed. Do I? Weird. <laughs> hmm. Did you want to jump in yourself? Water's still nice and hot. Uh, thanks, but it's a little early for me. I took one a few days ago. Musky critters like possums don't really need to wash head to toe too often. The oils on our body, the oils our body produce keep us pretty balanced, and it takes a lot for us to really stink. As long as I wash the parts that matter daily, as as long as I wash the parts that matter daily, you'd never know the difference. Of course, that's assuming you only stick around other possums. The teen always said he could smell me from a thousand paces and even gave me a bar of soap as a joke birthday gift one year. 
which is funny since he can't seem to keep his snout away from my ass. Oh, boy. I look up at Mark and he nods, seemingly not disgusted at all. Mm, that makes sense. Trust me, I'd let you know if I thought you needed one. Thanks. It's hard to gauge how other species will take it. He chuckles and walks over to the kitchen, <laughs> slowly sliding over, grabbing some wine glasses out of the cabinet. You're not the first possum I've met, trust me. New York has every species you could imagine. You get used to everybody doing their own thing. Bends down and I hear the clinking of glass as he grabs a bottle of wine from somewhere. Besides, I enjoy a little extra spice every now and then. <laughs> you smell good, Gray. I blush and kick my feet against the couch playfully. Well, you smell pretty good, too. Did you put cologne on again right after a shower? Nope. They sell a, ba a bath set of that set. Scent? Fuck. They sell a bath set of that scent. So I use the soap that came with it. I appreciate his attention to details. In the animal world, having a signature scent is a good way to stick out among your peers. I bet that drive for individuality helped him get where he is now. Everything about Mark is just so... Mark. Down. He uncorks the bottle and sets it out to breathe before sauntering back over to me. I figure we'll give it about 20 minutes or so. Shame I couldn't fit a proper wine rack in here. Uh, but they stack nicely under the sink. I'm not that picky with wine. I left home before I could ever try the nice stuff. Oh? So you come from money after all? I had a feeling. I lean back with my hands behind my head and sigh. I'm not thrilled to talk about my family, but it'd come up eventually. Yeah, old money, but I gave that up a long time ago. Uh, must have been for a good reason, then. It was. Mark, you know I'm not from around here. Well, yeah. New Orleans in 1928, if I'm correct. Yeah, well, not exactly. I used to live north of the city. Ever heard of the Oakfield Plantation? Shakes his head. My family's owned it for generations. And you don't have to have too many generations to go back before 1865. I'm getting at he comes from slave runner money. I grew up in the manor there. We had a full custodial staff, cooks, groundskeepers, anything you could imagine. Hmm. So something pretty nasty must have, must have happened for you to leave. It's not that simple. It's more like... I realized our livelihood was only possible because my grandfather owned slaves. Everything I used to think was beautiful suddenly looked... Dirty. Corrupted. What did you do? I tried to tell my sister how I felt. She usually stuck it out for me. Stuck it out for me, but... Nobody in the family would listen. They were too concerned with our reputation. They were worried I would cause a big stink, go against the politics of our conglomerates. So... My father's solution was to force me to marry the daughter of an oil baron. He threatened to cut me off completely if I didn't. Wow. Did you even know the girl? No. And it wasn't done out of love, of course. It would help it would help the company's upcoming merger. I was content with staying a bachelor if it meant our family line would die out one day. So you ran. His words stung a little, though his tone was more remorseful than outright judgmental. I left before I was forced to play into my father's hand. It wasn't an easy decision. I feel Mark wrapping an arm around me again. It feels a little inappropriate after that last comment. Color me impressed. You stood up for yourself. It's a commendable act. Feels like he's babying me. I could tell from just a glance you were special. 
Boy, do I know how to pick them. Um, right. <laughs> You're going to hold us for ransom? This is all secret ransom. <laughs> ransom. I can't keep doing this with him. I need to know something. I gently push his arm off me and look him in the eyes. Mark. Hmm? Why did you let me come stay with you? He looks at me dumbfounded and blinks for a few seconds, unsure of how to answer. Uh, why? Uh, well, you looked like you needed my help. I have the means, so... And those bums we saw yesterday, they didn't need help? He crossed his arms and looked at me sternly, the corner of his mouth twitching. The ones that were making fools of themselves in front of that whorehouse? Yeah, they needed help. Professional help. That's not the point. What about me made you trust me right away? I... I can't really put my finger on it. What's the point in asking me this now? I don't understand how any of this could seem normal to him. It's important because I need to know if I can trust you. Oh, God, that pissed him off. Oh, God, he's going. He's going. He's going. He scoffs and stands up, pacing around the couch. Trust me? What have I done? Gray, if you're uncomfortable, I'm sorry. J -j just tell me what I did so I can apologize. N no, it's not just... It's not like that. It's just... <sighs> Damn it. How can I make you understand that... Understand what? That it's dangerous to bring a stranger home when I live by myself? That you could be taking advantage of my kindness? Mark, that you've had every opportunity to rob me, kill me, wow, wow, and I would have only had myself to blame? Well, guess what? I know! I know this is fucking stupid! P please don't yell, I'm j- eh, But if someone had just done that for Joshua... Oh, oh boy. If I just, oh God. He crumbles onto the couch and starts sobbing into his hands. I awkwardly reach out to comfort him, but retract, unsure of where our boundaries lie right now. I'm sorry, I want to help, I, I just, don't know what to do. Please, tell me what's going on. He wipes his nose on his arm and takes a few a few deep breaths before shakily replying. No, you were right. You should know why. I didn't want to talk about it, but it happened three years ago. I had a brother, Josh. He wasn't great at much. School, work, girls, it, it always turned out the same for him. Our parents aren't patient people. They saw one son excelling and the other being a drain on their resources, on society. I nodded. I could easily relate, remembering how adept Jules was at playing her role in the family while I barely trailed behind. Even though he was a fuck-up, I loved him. I mean, we're family. We're supposed to take care of each other, right? Yeah, in theory. He clears his throat and grips his cheeks tightly. His, his cheeks. <laughs> Freudian slip. He clears his throat and grips his knees tightly, steeling himself for what's to come next. He had always hung around the wrong crowd. Our folks didn't like him bringing his friends home since they'd smoke and drink all night. It didn't help that he was stealing their money to buy pot. One night, they had just about had it. They kicked him out with only the shirt on his back. Jesus. What did you do? What did you do? His ears lower with his gaze and he looks away. I didn't do anything. I'd been living on my own for years and had no idea what was going on with him. Parents didn't care to mention it to me either. 
Oh. I found out a few months later when he surprised me in the lobby. He'd lost a ton of weight and I could tell he was using something strange, stronger than pot. So I took him in, cleaned him up, kept him fed. I was just happy to have my little bro back in my life. I even took him to the museum. He said he was so proud of me. I wish I had said it back. Not long after that, he reconnected with those friends and they got him hooked on speed. We were fighting one night. I said some things I shouldn't have and he walked out on me. Of his own accord, of course, I... I found out about his passing on New Year's morning, one week later. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. He wipes a final tear away with his, pink, with his pinky and smiles. I'm the one who should be sorry. I didn't want to put all that on you. I move closer and place a hand on his knee. No, I'm glad you did. I understand now. You really reminded me of him at his best. I guess that's... You really reminded me of him at his best. I guess that's why. Seeing you out there like that, it, it felt like I'd be letting Josh die again. You didn't let him die. You did whatever you could to keep him alive. More than your parents did. I felt especially sore hearing about yet another case of shitty parenting. I can't imagine not caring if my child lived or died. Those people deserve eternal damnation if, there's even, if there even was such a thing. I stand up and head to the kitchen. Mark flips around with a confused wolf. Gray? If there ever was a con if there was ever a conversation that needed to be followed by wine, it's this one. I poured us two heavy glasses and walk over. We toast, and I close my eyes to take a long, contemplative sip. It's fabulous wine, as expected. I hear Mark gulp the entire glass down and I shrug. It's been that kind of day. Suddenly, he surprises me with a big hug. He buries his head into my shoulder and I feel warm tears soak through my shirt. I'm so, so sorry. For what? You're my guest. I shouldn't have made you feel uncomfortable. This whole day was... I gently push his snout up and press my forehead to his, looking at his gentle amber eyes. I told you, I'm your friend, not your guest. Mark, I... Oh boy. There they go. Before I can finish, he plants his muzzle onto mine and locks me into a tender kiss. I taste the wine on his lips and a hint of ash. I'm so shocked that I can't pull away at first. Well, here's another choice. Oh boy. Do we kiss him back? Do we pull back? I don't know. Um, obviously, things are very emotional right now. There's been an introduction of alcohol, though not near enough to cloud one's judgment solely by itself, but things are very emotional at the moment. I don't know. Um, I guess follow the plot and kiss him back, but I did save just in case this goes poorly. I lean into it, careful not to spill my drink. The fro in his snout is gritty, but not enough to be irritating. His stubby whiskers tickle against mine. His breath is hot and he moans into my mouth. I place a hand on his chest and grab a fistful of soft, shaggy fur. I slowly move my fingers down towards his nipples, knowing they're hidden in that sea of orange. I find my target and feel a shudder run through his body. Whoa, 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 sorry. He responds by caressing the back of my neck, using the other hand to slowly unbutton my shirt. 
Time slows as we make out. His long canine tongue dances with mine, and I feel something firm rubbing against my leg. Uh huh. He's getting hard, and so am I. I tap his shoulder and pull back slowly. Uh, What's wrong? Nothing. It's just a little fast. Oh, right. Of course. He sits up and straightens his robe out, strategically covering his lap with the extra fabric. Uh, how embarrassing. The, the wine must mark. It's okay. I liked it. His ears perk up and he quacks his head curiously. Really? I rub his head, mussing up his mane. Yes, but you're my friend first and foremost. I want to take things slowly and get to know you better before we move the goalposts any further. Hmm. <laughs> yes, I'd, I'd like that. I kiss him on the forehead and give him a hug. I almost, almost said give him a tug. I was like, man, way to take it slow. But now I give him a hug. I haven't felt this way about someone in a long time. There's electricity in the air, the thrill of not knowing where this will lead. The sweet moment is interrupted by the sound of a growling stomach. Marks this time. He chuckles and rubs his belly. Guess it's about that time again. <laughs> and say we worked up an appetite. <laughs> he reaches behind him and grabs a phone, a thick coiled cable hanging around his shoulders like one of Simone's feather boas. I think... I think I'll take a note out of your book. Pizza? I love you. <laughs> we laugh and order a large pie to go with our drinks. We spend the rest of the night recounting our day between greasy bites of dough and polish off that bottle of wine before cra cracking open a second. I never expected Mark to be so forward. Maybe it comes with the times? I'm used to assuming most men are off the table strictly for my own safety. I suddenly feel a lot more at ease knowing I can be myself while staying with Mark. As I finish up my third slice, I cough awkwardly to get his attention. He's mid-bite, a long string of cheese connecting his snoo to a half-eaten slice. So, um... Chomp! <laughs> How did you... know? What? That I was gay? Hearing the words said so casually made me instinctively look around, as if someone could be spying on us. Well, yes. From the way those cops talked to us earlier, it doesn't seem like people are any more accepting here. He leans back, taking a deep sip of wine for continuing. Well, I guess the simple answer is I went to college. I know, I know, it's cliche. Yes, yes. Yes, it is. It turns out this is a secret first day of college fucking game, no. But once I was able to get away from my folks and spend some time getting to know myself, getting to choose who I wanted to be, uh, uh, who I wanted to be instead of what was expected, I was, it was suddenly all so clear. Women just weren't for me, and men were. I see. I'm happy it was simple for you then. Yeah, I mean... Wasn't it like that when you figured it out? I tug on my collar nervously. I haven't exactly figured it out. I'm not gay. At least, I don't think that's the right word. He leans in, interested. Oh, do tell. I blush, somehow more embarrassed talking about this than kissing him. I've had relationships with women before and loved them. Well, loved one. He nods, his tone still respectful. I see. So you like both men and women? Mark, I like everything. Whoa, oh Jesus. <laughs> There's an awkward pause before he erupts in laughter. I cover my head in shame as his lights turn into, his laughs turn into rough coughs, pushing it down with one more drink. Mark! Sorry, sorry, that caught me off guard. I think I understand what you mean. There's a word for it, if if it's what I think it is. I stare curiously and nod. Now we know you can love now we know you can love a man or a woman equally, yes? Right. 
Would you feel the same if you met one who used to live life as the other? Oh, wow. We're... <laughs> the 60s. The, the 60s are more progressive than the child that I had in the fucking 90s and 2000s. I think for a moment, I had never really considered it. Jean was a man, but regularly dressed up as a girl, and I found him equally beautiful with either gender's presentation. And I don't think I'd, lo I'd have loved Simone any less if her bottom half were like mine or a teen's. Yes, I'd feel the same no matter what gender they felt they were. I glance over to the kitchen at the pa pans on the wall. Okay. Oh, easy joke. Pans on the wall. Not that kind of pan. All it means is that you have the capacity to feel attracted to or fall in love with someone regardless of their sex or gender. Like some final piece of the puzzles clicked into place. A word I'd been desperate to find. Wow. So I am. I take his hand in mine. In mind. Uh, and I take my hand in. I take his hand in mine, and hold it to my chest. Thank you. You don't understand how long that had bothered me. Smile softly, rubbing my chest gently. I'm glad. But remember, a word is just a word. At the end of the day, no one term can truly define who you are as an individual, Josh. Oof, duh. You just called us Josh. Gray. Th that's what I said. He chuckles and coughs up a wine burp before he takes our glasses over to the sink. Little time with a little time gone by, Mark was able to now able to laugh at the bumps along the way. His smile lights up the room, and I feel that warm, safe feeling wash over me again. So we're just gonna glan let's just fucking go right past that. Okay. I just needed context. That's all. Anyone in his position would be a little off sometimes. After we lost Sam, well... None of us were ever the same. Oh, look at them! Snuggling. He comes back and cozies up to me, yawning. He nuzzles onto my chest and I gently, gently stroke his mane. The both of us are pleasantly buzzed and it seems like a good time to start winding things down for the evening. This might have been one of the best days of my life. Even if things are uncertain and scary at times, if he's here with me, things will be alright. Oh, something bad's about to fucking happen. Oh god, I'm starting to drift off with him still on top of me. He's falling asleep, rising and falling in time with breathing. Ah, damn, we never made it to the bed. Ah, well. Another night on the couch won't kill me. Oh, the music stopped! Oh god! Hey... Hey... Oh god, here it is. Here is this fucker. Aw, oh, young love. Y'all see? Y'all love to see it. Oh, you're gonna leave them be for tonight? How generous. Who the... Oh, it's just you. God, the fucking eyes on them. I figured they earned some a good night's rest before things get... Well, it wouldn't be a fair game if they were plumb tuck it now, would it? If you ask me, it's still quite unbalanced. But that's what I've come to expect from your play style. Careful now, boy. Um, now, that was a joke. I'd like to make a wager then. Alrighty, let's hear it. I'm betting that the possum will fold early. Really now? Are you sure you want to make a bet against the house? Especially after you work so hard to win your own. I have a condition. What? Give me a piece on the board. What? what? This is so fucking weird, dude. They're asking to be put in the quote-unquote game, which is our life, I guess, trying to keep fucking Mark from killing themselves, possibly? No, I see now. That would be mighty interesting, wouldn't it? Something to distract him from that thing. Only then can it be a fair test of the boy's metal. Hmm. And what would be in it for you, son? What's in it for me? 
Why, to let me pick it apart and examine its contents piece by piece. Hmm. You're a sick puppy, you know that? But alrighty, it's a deal. All hands off the table now. You try anything funny and all bets are off, son. Splendid. Well then, I have work to do. I'll be seeing you soon, Mr. Gray. Well, that adds a little interesting wrinkle. So we know he called him a puppy. We don't know exactly. Well, obviously, we don't know who that is. Um, but they're asking to be put in the game. The only canine in this group is Mark. But Mark's already in the quote-unquote game. Um, so I don't know. And you don't see anyone else in this fucking frame. It couldn't be a hint. And so it seems like the whole shtick here is betting with lives. Because the, the people are the cards. So that's kind of what you're betting. And I don't know. It this, this whole thing is, at the very least, freaky as fuck. Like, that... <laughs> There seriously is a overwhelming sense of this is all fucking going somewhere for something that somehow I have no fucking clue. But I'm very interested and I'm intrigued and I can't wait to see what comes next. So, without further ado, thank y'all very much for watching this episode of Burrows. These episodes, because I just played the whole build without any taking any breaks. Extras. Coming soon. Fair enough. What's about? Yes. Uh, game includes a lot of, lot of stuff. Oh, that's a pet peeve. Our Patreons. They're patrons on Patreon. But <laughs> uh, I'm just joking. But yeah, here are the credits for all of the people who work on this. So music to art and design and writing and programming. Thank you to all of them, and thank you to the patrons for doing your thing to uh, to, to make this, this idea, this realm, this interesting concept into a reality. Thank you all very much for watching and for doing what you're doing. And on the next one, we'll see who the hell this new guy is that's coming in. Could be, we didn't, no, we, they, they, they referred to them quite frequently with masculine terms. You know, son and boy. So we'll see. I don't fucking know. Thank you all for watching. I'll talk to you all again next time. Have a nice day.